Hi, people. We hope you're having a great day today. For us, it's definitely been one of those days that we had the luxury of having a new Heartland episode and analyzing it. Fortunately, this episode, titled Bad Moon Rising, was the best one that Season 15 has presented so far. It was different than the previous ones in the sense that it moved beyond the character developments and explored more difficult and yet crucial social issues. While in previous episodes we focused on what everybody feels and how they interact with each other, in Bad Moon Rising, we watched the social structure of the Hudson and where the Heartland family fits within that structure. Besides, we saw how the so-called outsiders are being treated by the locals and the realities of invisible social classes. Now, without further rambling, let's get deep dive into what this episode taught us about the rural life in Canada and its people through a series of break-ins that trouble a small community. First and foremost, we have to talk about the obsession over safety in the Hudson community. There is nothing more normal than the desire to feel safe within your own home. In fact, if you're not feeling safe, can you consider that place home? Well, we doubt so. However, it seems like the Hudson residents are regarding the safety element as a given part of living in the Hudson. In fact, the phrase that we often hear about Canada's safety, in which people joke about how no one locks their doors, is literally mentioned in this episode to show how great the town is, and to be honest, it's great. Who wouldn't want to live in a place where it's so safe that you don't even have the locks on? But considering this as a given aspect creates a bubble of safety within the Hudson community, in which they assume that the reason why the Hudson is great is the fact that they are great. This might be true for the most part. However, this notion inherently assumes that anyone who is from outside of Hudson isn't so great by nature. Thus, anyone from outside is posing a potential threat to the Hudson community and their safety. Even having security cameras is regarded as an insult in this place and we, as the outsiders of this sterilized community, are struggling to empathize with that. To see a community that is highly dedicated to preserving its safety is amazing. And yet, it's also a little bit worrying since such dedication makes people obsessive and prevents them to have clear thinking over possible solutions. Instead, they apply to extreme measures of blaming anyone from outside of the community and thus turn this into a witch hunt. At this point, we should also mention the elephant in the room, the high privilege of the Hudson community and how it sees the outsiders as natural inferiors. In this case, Paula provides a great example of how white privilege can be utilized as a tool to criminalize others. Paula, who is a representation of a stereotypical figure that we usually refer to as Karen on social media, is clearly interested in protecting her community. However, she is more interested in something else, keeping the community as sterilized as possible. Instead of searching for who might be behind the break-ins and applying to the cops for assistance, she quickly comes to the conclusion that fits her already established agenda, which is to blame the outsiders for anything that is wrong within the community. Her deduction was too fast and baseless. In fact, it seems like she was already uncomfortable with the presence of a therapy center for the foster children and saw the break-ins as a chance to get rid of the center. As a typical Karen, she doesn't like anything that is outside of rich, white, and privileged within her community. By excusing her safety concerns, she is aiming to have a homogenous community that lacks diversity and compassion for the ones who might be not as privileged as they are. The fact that some of the children in the center have a criminal record is even better for a made-up case. Because in her perspective, there is no place for remorse in people's ability to change, even if you are a child. In this picture, our Heartland family is positioned at a strange place. On the one hand, the Flemings and almost all of their friends and family are white privileged and very much at the center of this sterilized community of the Hudson. Well, even the mayor of the town is a Fleming. On the other hand, the Flemings seem to have an awareness over their privilege, which makes them compassionate towards others. They never hesitate to lend a helping hand to the ones who need assistance and are remorseful. They never show their privilege off to others. On the contrary, they often do whatever they can to be useful in the personal improvement of anyone. In Bad Moon Rising, we see Amy training kids and supporting Cooper in his venture, while Lou is concerned for Cooper, as she doesn't want to shut the center down. Regardless, they also cannot help but wonder whether or not there is the possibility of the children having anything to do with those crimes. Especially Lou, due to the political pressure on her, feels herself obligated to make an inquiry in the therapy center and even ask Amy if she thinks the children are capable of such things. Therefore, despite the fact that they are far from being similar to Paula, the Flemings are still a part of that community and cannot act entirely outside of the box 
when it comes to such tricky situations. However, even the children are questioning each other about the case, since they don't trust each other and also share an internalized guilt of coming from a troubled background. Thus, maybe we shouldn't be so critical of the Flemings for their suspicion. At this point, we should also remember the fact that Ty was also not a part of the Hudson community at first. However, thanks to the welcoming nature of the Flemings, he managed to leave his troubled background behind and be accepted within the Hudson. What do you think of the Hudson community and their highly visible white privilege that occasionally reveals itself? How do you see the position of the Flemings in this picture? Who do you think are the real responsible ones from the break-ins? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.